Okay, that's right. You guessed it. In today's video, we are going to be talking about adding resistors in parallel. And this is the circuit that we're going to use. We want to know, and this is what we're going to be talking about in the video, we want to know when we close this switch, when the switch is closed, will the following things increase, decrease, or stay the same? So we have a circuit here with one voltage source. We have three bulbs. All the bulbs are in parallel with each other and with the voltage source, and we have this switch which goes across points A and B. And we want to know, will the following things, the total current of the circuit, the total equivalent resistance of the circuit, the voltage drop across bulb 1 and bulb 2, the current through bulb 1 and 2, and the brightness, we're going to do all of that. What will happen to those things when we close that switch? Are they going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? Now, before we do that, I'm just going to say this video is part one of the parallel adding resistors in parallel. The next part, I'll go through it with, a, with the sim from PHET Simulations. Then it's also good, I'm going to make two videos for series circuits. So you should kind of compare the parallel and the series. You shouldn't really memorize, you should have an understanding about how parallel circuits work. Watch the series video, then you'll have an understanding about how series circuits work, and then you'll understand the differences, and you'll hopefully understand them conceptually without memorizing. Okay, so let's start with the current through this circuit. So once again, we have three bulbs, we have a switch that's open, we have a voltage source, and we are going to close the switch, and we want to know what happens to the brightness, no, excuse me, we want to know what happens to the total current through the circuit. Okay, we're going to start with Ohm's law v equals I times R. We want to know the total current, so we are going to rearrange that. So if I, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, and we're just going to keep it simple, and we have a 9 volt and 3 18 ohm resistors. And we are going to use the current rule, which tells us that the total current is equal to the sum of the currents through each of the branches. So we can now calculate the current through each of the branches before we close the switch. So from branch 1, we have current 1. And current 1, we know is going to be 0 0.5 amperes because the voltage across this bulb is 9 volts because it's in parallel with the voltage source. And divided by the resistance of 18. And 9 divided by 18 is 0 0.5. So the current is 0 0.5 amperes. Likewise, from bulb number 2, we have a current. The current is 0 0.5 amperes. And then the third bulb, because the switch is open, there's no current. So if there's no current, then there's no current. All right, so that means the current through z number 3 is 0, and the total current is 1.5 amperes. Now we're going to close the switch. And so after we close the switch right here, we're going to close the switch. Now afterwards, when we close the switch, we're going to get current through bulb 3, but the current through 1 and 2 is going to remain the same because they're in parallel with the voltage. The current through I3 is going to be the same because we have the same voltage and the same resistance, and now the current goes to 1.5. So we had before, add them up, 1 amp. Afterwards, add them up, the total is 1.5 amperes. So we're going to say that, or we can see that the current increases. Now, we did that mathematically. I think it's also good to be able to explain that in your own words without using the word parallel. So let's see if we can just come up with a quick explanation. It's a little bit sometimes hard because we rely on the equations, and the equations really give us the answers. But how would you explain that in your own words? The total current increases because there's an additional branch. When we close the switch, there's an additional branch for current, and the current through the other branches stays the same because we know that the total current is the sum of the current through each branch. All right? Now, let's do the next one. The next one is the total equivalent resistance. Once again, we're going to start with Ohm's law. This time, we're going to rearrange for the resistance. We're going to say the total resistance... Okay, here it says total equivalent, but that's the total resistance. It's a little redundant because total and maybe equivalent people think of as the same thing, but it's the total resistance, I said, is the total voltage divided by the total current. If you want to know the totals, you've got to use these totals. So we know before we close the switch from the previous slide that the total current was 1 ampere. We know the total voltage is 9 volts divided by the total current, and that gives us a total resistance for that circuit or an equivalent resistance for that circuit of 9 ohms. Now, afterwards, when we close the switch, we found out that the total current from the previous slide is 1.5 amperes. So we can calculate the total resistance again. We have the same total voltage, which is just 9 volts. We have a new total current, which is 1.5 amperes. More current 
means that the resistance is going to go down. Okay, so that means when we close the switch, that the resistance, the total equivalent resistance of that circuit goes down. It decreases. Now, that is a little bit confusing for some people. Could be like, well, you added a resistor. How could the resistance decrease? If you add a resistor, then the resistance must go up. Well, for parallel circuits, it doesn't work like that. And the reason we know, really the reason we know that the resistance decreased is because the current went up. More current, less resistance. Less resistance, more current, because those things are inversely proportional to each other. So we can explain that. We can say that the equivalent resistance decreases because the current increases. That's really the hint. And we know that the resistance is inversely proportional to the current. So the current is on the bottom here. If we increase the current, then the resistance is going to go down. Okay? That's a little confusing. Try to think about it. But you more current must mean that the resistance went down. And that's what we got. Okay. The next one is letter C. Now we want to know the voltage drop across each of the bulbs. The voltage drop across bulb 1 and bulb 2 when we close the switch. And this time, again, we're going to use Ohm's law. All right. And we know that for the voltage rule tells us that when we have parallel circuits, the voltage across each of the branches is equal to the voltage of the source in this type of simple parallel circuit. Okay. So now we can talk about before. Before, the voltage was 9 volts from, from bulb number 1. Okay, we know, we can know, because those are parallel, but we could also calculate it. It's the current times resistance. We had the current was 0 0.5 amperes times this resistance, 0 0.5 times 18 is 9 volts. The same thing for bulb 2. Now, before we close the switch, before we close the switch, there's no current through I3. So if there's no current, then the current would be 0. The resistance would still be 18, but the voltage is 0. Now we're going to close the switch, and now we get current through I3, and we found out earlier that the current is the same for each branch. Okay, so now we're going to have voltage across uh, bulb number 3, which is 9 volts, because its current is also 0 0.5, times 18, we get 9, and the other ones remain the same. So the voltage drop across bulb 1 and bulb 2, when we close the switch, the voltage across bulb 1 and bulb 2 stay the same. Now, the voltage across bulb 3 increased from 0 to 9, but I was asking what about for the other two stays the same. Okay? Now, we can ex explain that by saying the voltage across bulb 1 and bulb 2 stays the same because each of the bulbs is connected directly to the voltage source. Okay, I'm trying not to use the word parallel. I don't want to use the word parallel because if I use the word parallel, then I'm kind of answering the question with the answer, or the answer with the question. Okay, I'm giving the answer with the question. So you come up with your own words, and then we know the current through each of the bulbs didn't change. Okay, and the voltage is the current times resistance. The resistances are fixed. In this case, the currents don't change. Okay, so we have Ohm's law, and we have that, the voltage rule. Okay, now letter D. We want to know what about the current through 1 and 2. Okay, now, before we close the switch, okay, we, we know from the previous slides that the current is um, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 through 1 and 2, and there was no current through bulb number 3. Now, when we close the switch, now we get a current through bulb number 3. Okay, if we get a current through bulb number 3, then we're going to have the same current, 0 0.5 amperes, because we know the voltage and the resistance. The current is the voltage 9 divided by the resistance 18. But the other two branches, they still have the same voltage drops across them, 9 volts. They still have the same resistances, so they also have the same current. So the current doesn't change. Okay, you're kind of seeing a little bit of a pattern here. The individual branches, the voltage, the currents, and as you'll see in the next one, the power doesn't change which is the brightness. Okay, so the current through bulb 1 and bulb 2 stays the same because the voltage drop across each of the bulbs doesn't change. And the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So the voltage didn't change. They have fixed resistances, and therefore they have not fixed currents necessarily, but the current doesn't change. All right, now what about the last thing we're going to do is the brightness of each bulb. The brightness of each bulb is directly related to the power. Okay, the power output of each bulb. And the power is calculated as the current times the voltage. Now, you should be getting a, get seeing the pattern here. Okay, the current through each branch didn't change when we close the switch. 
and the voltage across each branch didn't change when we closed the switch. So before we close the switch, let's just go through it. The power is 4.5 watts. See, this 0 0.5 times 9 is 4.5. That's the equation. One of the equations you can use to calculate the power output. For number two, for bulb number two, it's the same thing. The current and the voltage comes up with 4.5 watts. Now, before we close the switch, bulb three wasn't lit. It should kind of make sense to you. Okay, this is a bulb. There's no current running through here. The bulb, the power output is zero. Now we close the switch again. After we close the switch, okay, then we get a current through that branch, the third branch, and then we get a power. But again, the current and the voltage don't change. So the other ones have the same brightness. So when you close, this is kind of one of the distinctive things about a parallel circuit. When you add another uh, bulb or another resistor, let's say another bulb in parallel, the brightness of the other two bulbs doesn't change. Okay? So that stays the same. And then we can just say the same thing. Basically, again, the brightness of the bulb one and two stays the same. Now, I'm trying not to use the word parallel again. So I said because the current through the bulb and the voltage drop across each of the bulbs stays the same. And the power is calculated as the current times the voltage. So if the current stays the same and the voltage stays the same and the power stays the same. Okay, so there you go. That was kind of a lot. And here I came up with back where we started a little summary slide. All right, these are some of the things you should know. Now, again, I said I'm going to, uh, you should watch the series uh, circuit when we add uh, resistors in series, and you'll see that they're kind of the opposite. All right, that's kind of one of the characteristics of parallel and series circuits, simple parallel and simple. They're kind of opposite of each other, their characteristics. Okay, so let's just review it. The total current through the circuit increases. We got another branch. The equivalent resistance decreases because we have more current. The voltage drop across each bulb stays the same because the current stays the same or they're connected to the battery directly. The current stays the same because the voltage doesn't change. And the brightness stays the same because both the current and the voltage don't change. So there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things for me. Please give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Click on the bottom right hand there, right hand uh, right, red, red button there, and subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them, that's right, just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.